What's up guys, I am Tsu. Are you a gamer? Because today's collectible might be right up your alley. Come along with me today as we unbox, inspect, and assemble a Street Fighter V's Chung Li slash Morgan from Darkstalkers crossover figure. I'll get more into that in a little bit. From PCS Collectibles. She's right behind me, so let's move on over. First, we're gonna find out how much space this box is gonna eat up, starting with its dimensions. Its height is 21.5 inches, which is 54.61 centimeters. Width is 20.75 inches, which is 52.71 centimeters. And depth is 9.25 inches, which is 23.5 centimeters. So it's not the biggest box for a quarter scale figure, but definitely not a small package either. The first thing we are gonna see is the Street Fighter V logo, which may seem strange if this is a Darkstalkers figure, but we're gonna get more into that in just a bit. This exclusive version here comes with the additional art print hand autographed by Edwin Huang. I don't personally use or display included art prints myself, but it didn't cost any more than the standard version, so free is free, right? There are definitely gonna be some folks who will appreciate this addition in the exclusive version. The box art has simple images of the actual figure itself without too many over glorified effects. The first thing we'll find in the box is the number card, a staple and standard in PCS collectibles. The styrofoam is secured with Velcro straps, which I'm a huge fan of. Now, don't you wish they all came this way? It's super convenient, no razor needed, and it's really easy to put back together and box back up. If you're listening Sideshow, you need to do these with your figures too. In the package, we have a total of eight pieces that make up this figure, and we're gonna need all of them to complete her assembly as there is no additional or optional swap outs for her. Since they're already included, I'm gonna use the gloves this time around. Normally, I don't use gloves because I like the tactile feel for grip. Even though I get my fingerprints on the figure, I just end up wiping them down later. First out, we have the base, which is a simple disc with a red clear resin of some sort. And if you know me, you'll know that I'm a sucker for translucent resin. It's red here to simulate a pool of blood, whereas in the Jungli version, it's blue to simulate water. The bottom of the base has the appropriate company logos and this figure's individual numbered marking. Moving on to the main body here, let's be careful removing the bag as it could easily snag on her hair. Her pose is very Chung Li esque because this figure is actually a Street Fighter V figure of Chung Li with the Morgan DLC costume overlaid on. So, this isn't really a Darkstalkers figure, which is a bit of a shame, kind of a bummer, and also explains why her pose is so quintessentially Chung Li. As we go through this process, we are also inspecting for any damages or imperfections. We don't want a dud, though I do see some fingerprint markings in the paint already. Aside from that, tell me what you guys think about her portrait so far. Next, we have her left arm, which on this figure, her palm was turned inward as opposed to the original Jung Li version, which her palm is faced outward. Unlike her other arm, her right arm here has no major changes compared to the original version. Now, if I can ever get it out of the bag here, her right wing is the next to come out. The first thing I'm noticing is that there is a metal peg key, but no magnet to attach. So it'll be interesting to see how this will attach to her. Her left wing is next and allow me to point out that the black colors in her wings aren't just black. There's a very subtle metallic sheen in it. I don't know if it's showing up on camera because it's even hard to see with the naked eye, but it is there when the light hits it just right. These are the little wings on her head. These already feel extremely thin and frail, and it doesn't seem like the attachment pegs are metal either. It looks like one of her wings has grown some pimples too. I'm not sure if that's intentional, but overall, no major imperfections or damages to this figure that we've seen. Since that was everything in the box, now on to the next chapter, which is assembling her. As always, we're gonna start with the base and notice that there is only one keyhole as this figure has only one point of contact to the base. So let's be very careful during this entire process. The square end on her leg is keyed directionally so she has a very specific orientation and does not spin freely on the base. 
I do love the smaller footprint of this base though. Next, moving on to her arms, these attach magnetically. Her right arm goes on just as you'd expect. Though her left arm takes a bit more work because the feather straps over her shoulders are actually like a soft PVC like plastic which has sagged a bit and we have to lift it a little and move it out of the way to be able to slide her arm in here. But after that, it's in there nice and snug. We have her head wings here, or whatever these are called. Morrigan is such a strangely designed succubus, right? Anyways, as I alluded to before, these wings are a little stressful to attach as they're so thin and frail. These may not have any given flexibility, so we're gonna try and not put any pressure on them whatsoever. Her left one is a bit tricky because her hand is in the way, so I'm not sure what could go on first, either the hand or the wing, but we got it on here without a hitch. Her actual rear wings are a stranger story still. I'm not quite sure how far down that metal peg runs into the stems of her wings, so we definitely need to be cautious as not to snap them. The peg seems to attach and hold on purely with friction, which I'm not a fan of. Also, they attach diagonally upward, so they really are working against gravity here. Not to mention, we have to be careful as it's very awkward getting an angle under her hair, all while gently putting pressure on a figure that is standing precariously on one foot. So without the magnets, they seem to be holding for now, but I'm curious how these are gonna hold on long-term. Now that she's completely assembled, I gotta say, she's pretty hot. But we can't end the video here, right? Let's, uh, let's do a montage. What do you think? Enjoy. So that's gonna be it for this one, guys. If you're interested in seeing the full review of this where I get into all the details and intricacies, stay tuned for that upload coming soon. Also, if you're not already subscribed and like seeing cool collectibles like this figure, be sure to hit that subscribe button. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. It keeps me going, it keeps me pumped. And if you have any questions or comments, you know where to leave them. I know your time is precious, so let me thank you so much for giving me some of it. As always, don't worry what others think. Collect the things that you love, and I'll see you in the next upload. Take care. Dude, Morgan is so hot. They knew what they were doing when they created her. When Darkstalkers first came out, I was like, okay, there's zombies, werewolves, uh, vampires, but uh, who is this Morgan girl? I gotta play this game. Who is this Felicia girl? I gotta play this game. Trying to get into a new franchise, it's kinda hard, but then you see characters like Morgan and Felicia as a young kid, you're like, that's what drew me into Darkstalkers. And then I ended up really liking the game.